Live from Vienna, Austria, it's theCUBE. Covering .next Europe 2016, brought to you by Nutanix. Here's your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to theCUBE, SiliconANGLE Media's uh, program. It was the worldwide leader in enterprise tech coverage. Happy to bring back to the program, fresh off the keynote, Sunil Pody, who is the Chief Product and Development Officer with Nutanix. Thanks yeah, th so much for joining me. Thanks, too. All right, so uh, big crowd. I mean, what a 12, 1,300 people here, first European show. I mean, bigger than it was in Miami last year, so first, congratulations. Yeah, thank you so much. In fact, uh, I think it was a last minute uh, hustle for uh, oh. our marketing team, because I think the room was like for 800, 900 people, yeah, people and, standing. And, uh, my understanding is, if you work for Nutanix, you were pushed out in the hallway, it's, you know, customers, partners, everything I, like I that. I guess we took over the bars from last night <laughs> for seeing the live streaming. Yeah, yeah. and, and I, I mean, like, kudos to the team, because first of all, I mean, Nutanix you've been under great growth, everybody's super excited with the IPO, but just, I know the blocking and tackling of the event team to get everything moving and support this, we went from a one hotel event to I think you're spread across four hotels, breakout sessions, I hear people are going after the keynote to do some sessions to repeat them, so that everybody that comes can kind of learn about all the stuff that you walked through in the keynote this morning. Yeah, I mean I think we are really gratified with uh, the support that we have seen from uh, the European audience for this particular conference. I think it started off with, uh, you know, trying to figure out can we actually go beyond our first annual conference. And now as you said, we are almost 50% larger in terms of attendance, yeah. in terms of show of support, right? So Sunil, uh, I, I kind of like the, the, the framework that you laid out. You said it was there's storage to virtualization to cloud. Um, I think I've been saying for years is, you know, I mean storage, you know, we want to get out of the storage business. Even most of the storage companies are kind of understanding about uh, you know, solutions and moving up the stack. We saw you know, the largest storage company uh, was just acquired, yep. uh, you know, finished uh, the, the acquisition there. So, so that's been changing, but maybe, maybe walk us through kind of the thinking of you know, what that means, what, what th that cloud vision uh, that, that yeah, you Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, happy to do so. So I think, I think at a pretty high level, we used to talk about these as three acts for the company, between making storage invisible, making virtualization invisible, and then eventually making cloud as and public cloud versus private cloud, the convergence of that happened. I think at a pretty high level, I think uh, there's clarity now in our evolution of this company. I think we are at a pretty, you know, an inflection point where, you know, we are part of two acts of the company and we are in the middle of the first act is what I say. Um, which is essentially the first act is about bringing the one-click experience of a public cloud like Amazon or Azure to the enterprise. And that has to obviously you know, cover virtualization, compute, and storage, and today we announced that we're extending that to also networks and security. And so that'll take us a while to kind of finish the job, but essentially that's the, the gist of what Act One is about. And it'll probably be a 15-year rollout, we're in the middle of that, and uh, at a pretty uh, high level, I think what you're going to see coming out next year is the emergence of Act Two, where the convergence moves from infrastructure to the consumption, convergence of consumption models, whether it be public cloud, private cloud, CapEx, OpEx, however, essentially think about it as making hybrid invisible. So that's, uh, that's what's coming next. Yeah, and you use the analogy of Amazon. You said Amazon is .com with the one click, and it's also AWS yeah. with the cloud. Uh, I, I think, you know, Amazon's been around for a while now, but we're still trying to see that play out. And uh, you know, as you talked about, on the, even the, that one-click simplicity for infrastructure, people are still trying to wrap their heads around it. You guys are, have great growth, but it's still early yeah. uh, for both of those things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think uh, the way we we summarized our view, at least as part of this Act One of one-click convergence, was the fact that you know, if Amazon, if you look at people, look at Amazon and say, "Oh, go, we are the AWS for the enterprise," but it's really, you know, there are two primary innovations, which is the .com experience, which can consumerized the consumption experience, plus also the web scale cloud delivery architectures, right? So I think one of the things that keeps us honest as a company is to ensure that we provide the one-click experience along with the web scale fabric. So, so that's part and parcel of what we talked about today was the fact that we can provide that one-click experience across any kind of workload, whether it be files, bare metal, you know, virtual machines or containers, across any kinds of deployments, whether it be enterprise or a robo and so forth, and across any kind of infrastructure, whether it be virtualization, compute storage, as well as networking. So, so, so Neil, big question, you know, we've all as an industry been, been uh, kind of grappling with is then, 
you know, what happens to the CIO? What is his role going forward? Uh, do we get need a new name for you yeah, know what yeah, the CIO's yeah, role yeah, does? Yeah, yeah. What, what's your take? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. thanks for the setup question. So, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I think you know the way I, I you know, we we have internalized this is the fact that look, I think every CIO, the way I say it, is going to be a CAO, which is uh, you know today every CIO pretty much is asked by the CEO to say, look, all my businesses are going to Amazon or otherwise in the cloud, and you know my only option is to now rotate towards the public cloud. And as we've always talked about, really what a CIO needs to do is to become a chief Amazon officer in the sense that they should be able to react to their businesses and provide the same level of experience that a public cloud provides, but for the right workload. So for certain workloads, I should provide the same thing through a single pane of glass, the same experience of consuming Amazon, but in the same way for certain workloads, with the same single pane of glass, same operational SLAs, I should be able to provide a bunch of enterprise workloads. So that, I think, is the evolution of what a CIO will become, is this, you know, where, where a, a business user should be able to come to IT and specify the workload that they want deployed, and IT is able to react quickly, and with a single one-click experience provision the workload, whether it's on Nutanix on-premise or Amazon off-premise. Yeah, so, uh you know, we're, we're mostly in agreement, I think, on that. From a Wikibon standpoint, we put out a little over a year ago now, uh, we called it true private cloud, and it said the public cloud yeah. is really the benchmark, uh, what we have to look at and say, you know, this is how you measure yourself against, and it's not just the price, or even the one click. It's that all those operational things. You know, IT, uh, the, the joke we had is that, uh, you know, enterprise simplicity is an oxymoron because yeah. it doesn't exist. Yeah. So we need to change that environment. So, um, you know, we like the trend, we're supportive of it, and we absolutely would think, uh, you know, hyperconvergence is one of those first bases on the platform underneath. Yeah, I mean, I think if you think about it, like a simple thing that you get from a public cloud is you don't do upgrades anymore on public cloud, right? They do it y wait, magically. Wait, what, what version of AWS are you running on? <laughs> uh, no, nobody knows that. <laughs> right? That's exactly the point. And I think that that's essentially a simplistic way, even though it's very mundane. I think that's the kind of experience that we aim to offer for the enterprises. That look, you know, you should be able to just go download, the screen should be able to, just like iPhone or a Tesla, show up with a new upgrade, I'll just click on it, go take a coffee break, and my clusters are all updated. And that's essentially what we're seeing already with many of our customers is this beauty of one-click upgrades equates to this experience of a public cloud. All right, so you brought your head of engineering, Rajiv Appa, during the keynote yeah. and, and laid it out really well. It's uh, two things, make it simple and give customers what they need before they need it. Yeah. I'm going to be as Amazon show at the end of the month. I guarantee you they're going to put a slide up with that bar chart of yeah. how many new products and sure. releases they did you know, in the last quarter, in the last year. Yeah, I yeah, mean, they are, yeah. you know, yeah. they, they turn that flywheel, they keep adding things. How does a little company like Nutanix, you know, compete with you know, innovation and growth and features? Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, I, th I think, look, I mean, first of all, the size of the company of Nutanix itself has grown. I mean, we are north of almost 750 people in R&D, so it's, it's, it's a pretty hefty organization that's going pretty fast, but that said, I think it obviously has to come down to not just working hard, but working smart. And uh, a lot of this comes down to picking and choosing features that natively need to go into the core product, as we will talk about and so forth, right? Versus features that make and leverage partners, leverage the platform that otherwise Amazon had to build natively. So a lot of our capabilities are around platformification of this enterprise cloud so that our partners who are willing to help re-platform the, you know, the data center, folks like Arista, folks like Palo Alto, folks like F5, Citrix, and so forth, right? I think they can leverage the platform to deliver a true one plus one equals three kind of leverage. Yeah, and, and just I want you to clarify, there's some people I talked to, they're like, oh, you know, boy, that Nutanix is aggressive. They said they're going to take out VMware and they're also going to take out Amazon. Mm -hmm. It's like, doesn't look like you're trying to head on attack on what Amazon's yeah, doing. Yeah, no, you know? absolutely. I mean, I think, I think it's a good point. I think, look, I think all companies are aspirational inspiration for us. Both VMware and Amazon are inspirational companies to us, right? Clearly, we, leverage a lot of ES, ESX footprint out there, but essentially our goal is to provide an Amazon-like experience. So in, in, this, in a sense, in fact, frankly for us, the way we think about it is that AWS and the whole public cloud way was a huge tailwind because it allowed customers to believe that something is possible of this scale and magnitude with this level of experience. And that's really what we come in, is we are, we're coming in the tailwinds of Amazon and, uh, and essentially providing that same level of experience for a majority of the enterprise workloads. So in that sense, it's very synergistic. Absolutely, that, that operational model is where we need to kind of, that's the lever that can kind of yeah. move uh, IT overall. All right, so Sunil, 
A lot of announcements, a lot of pieces. Uh, we spoke to you back in Vegas. Uh, maybe give us, that was, I believe, 4.7, now yeah. 5.0 yeah. uh, as yeah. it relates here. Give us, yeah. give us the thumbnail as to yeah. what the, the, the new so news. what's the thumbnail? I think there's a bunch of tactical stuff, and then I'll talk to you about the strategic stuff. The tactical stuff is around taking the platform and, uh, if I can call it, uh, ensuring that it's able to scale to support all workloads. So, for example, we announced the fact that not only can we support blocks, files, and containers, we now have enterprise workloads such as SAP certified on EHV. We have now have Oracle now that has collaborated to be certify their infrastructure on our block services. So that the whole point being that you can now genuinely leverage Nutanix end to end, all the way from VDI to SharePoint Exchange to uh, your high-end OLTP applications. So that was the first sort of, uh, if I can call it, ongoing or iterative uh, capabilities of the platform. Yeah, and, and congratulations, because you know that customers are looking. You know, my application, I need it to be certified. You know, Oracle's one. I mean, VMware struggled with that for years as yeah. to how that support works. Is that I, I saw there's like an Oracle box on the side, yeah, and that yeah, kind of ties yeah, in. Yeah, so, yeah. is that an Oracle server sitting outside yeah, of a Nutanix yeah. I mean, box? I mean, the, the, what does the, that the, mean? The key is that there's like half of the workloads of Oracle are still running on bare metal, yeah. uh, or, or the Oracle VM substrate. And essentially, our goal is to ensure that look, right now they're essentially a silo right now, it's talking to a separate SAN and so forth, using SCSI, iSCSI or Fiber Channel. Now with the Nutanix Acropolis block services, while you're running VMs for your traditional applications, the same substrate can now connect seamlessly using iSCSI and the ABS fabric into the Oracle farm. So you're running bare metal servers, compute, on, of Oracle connecting to the Acropolis fabric. And you now get the best of both worlds, which is now you can leverage your existing investments of performance and scale while getting the simplicity of one-click scale-out, operations upgrades, and all that good stuff. Right, so a couple of applications you mentioned, yeah. file uh, now, containers, uh, the, 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 yeah. lot, so a lot I th of I think, I think that that's the first sort of series of announcements around you know, making sure that you can support block level interface, native file services so that you know, VDI users, for example, user directories don't have to reside on a separate NAS environment, it can now be consolidated into the same Nutanix fabric with Acropolis file services. And then of course now, with next generation apps being built on containers, um, the fact that you don't have to manage VMs separately than containers, and two, the fact that containers uh, should transcend beyond being stateless from a deployment perspective to actually provide real stateful support a la storage functionality built into the native environment. So that, that's what ACS does, is provides the same power of you know, uh, storage and compute convergence that we did for VMs to the container lab. So that's the first series of things, right? So I think the sort of like the next sort of uh, layer, which is uh, part of our uh, you know, conversation that we talked about at the beginning was about how do we actually take the next step function to make one click enterprise cloud work, now that we've done it for compute, storage, and virtualization. And that's where the one click networks announcement comes into play. So uh, I don't know if you wanted yeah, to so dive into any particular yeah, yeah. area. Let's talk about networking. Uh, yeah. So uh, you guys, you're not coming out with a new switch. You're, you're not, you know, not a hardware company. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, you want development. Oh, How many hardware engineers do you have on your team? Um, uh, we have a reasonable set of our hardware engineers uh, that are system guys, so yeah. just like think about it as the Apple hardware construct, but it's a, a, a minority as compared to the software yeah, by a far amount. Big time, big time, big time, yeah. And, uh, so talk, you had Arista up on stage, you had a big logo slide of, yeah. uh, of yeah. lots of partners. software partners, yeah. both yeah. on the security side as well as kind of the network side, so uh, definitely understand you know, networking, if we start scaling out these configurations, you know, networking's got to be key, so you know, where does Nutanix add to that, and you know, what's yours? <coughs> yeah, I mean, let, let me start with maybe the why, right? And then we'll talk about the what and the how. So the why is essentially, people used to come to us all the time, logically, to your point, and say, hey, yeah, what about, uh, the easiest thing is, why don't you put a network switch inside your box and reduce some cabling and so forth. In our opinion, I think the data plane of networking um, and we have a lot of partners out there that have shown the fabric evolution of Ethernet switching, whether it's spine leaf or the various architectures. To us, the problem doesn't lie there. The problem lies in the control plane of networking, i.e., today folks come to us, they use Prism, and they say with one click I can understand whether a VM is slow because of my memory or my compute allocation or my storage capabilities. But if my packets are dropped on the way to the top of the rack, I have no idea. If there is a port misconfigured, I have no idea. There's a virtual network in the Nutanix fabric, how does that coexist with my physical network? In you know, all these things, right? So that was the genesis of what 
we you know, embodied over the last 12 to 18 months when we started developing one-click networks was the fact that it falls into like three major categories, which is visualize, so I have to first understand what's happening in the network. Whether it be, oh, here are my VMs and here are all the ports that they're connected to, here's my packet loss, and I cross it. So, and that's where the first set of functionality is around network visualization. The second set of functionality, which is a pretty big leap beyond visualization, is to help orchestrate network provisioning, for example. Every time VMs come up, a VM, VLAN is required, and we should be able to notify Arista or any of the top of the rack switches so that there's a turnkey VLAN provisioning and stuff like that, right? So there, the network orchestration starts with basic L2, L3 configuration. That's where we've shown demonstration with Arista, Brocade, Plexi, and a whole bunch of other vendors, but also moves up the stack to layer four to seven, where whether it's a Citrix Netscaler, or an F5 Big IP, or a Palo Alto firewall, or any, of, any of these services can be inserted seamlessly into the platform fabric, so that you can now say, hey, oh, for these 10 VMs, I can now insert um, a load balancing rule and, or a security policy, but when 10 more VMs pop up, the load balancing pool is automatically updated. So that's the two prongs of visualization and orchestration. And then there was a third thing, if you noticed. So security? Uh, yeah, yeah. Security was the thing that we had to think hard and deep about because obviously there's a layer of security that is dramatically changing with next generation security, app firewalling, and so forth. I think the part that people came to us for was that, look, when I go to Amazon again, or AWS, not only when I consume EC2 and S3, I not only do I not, you know, hypervisor is invisible, management is invisible, but I also th get things like security groups, like my segmentation, my native you know, application segments are just built into the core fabric, right? So what if we could do that and provide that same flexibility, capability to the mainstream enterprise? And that's why we announced you know, in the classic Nutanix fashion, the fact that micro-segmentation now on AHV is natively built in. Essentially what you can do now do is, just like you would go into Prism and say, oh, here are my apps, I'm going to you know, group these apps into my web tier, my database tier, or different kinds of application workloads, and when I provision them, before provisioning there's a very simple interface which simply says, put them in a segment. And once you segment it, under the cover, the policies and the rules are updated across the cluster in that single one click. So that now a customer can come in and say, hey, well, guess what? Uh, production is completely isolated from development. Oh, by the way, just for debugging, I can give you one-time access from you know, development into production, but then disable that rule very quickly. And those are the kinds of things that you can now do without requiring a completely discrete overlay network or a completely discrete set of products on top. This is all going to be built into the core fabric. Yeah, yeah the, definitely uh, that, that native uh, you know, micro-segmentation for security is, is hugely <coughs> important. Uh, we've talked to a number of your partners out there, you know, Palo Alto, Lumio, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, Juniper, we were at their conference recently. Um, I need to have that granularity and security needs to become pervasive, so if you're to be a platform, you need to tie into all of that. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the key is just like we built in one-click upgrades. We want to just basically take these complicated uh, operations that add friction from an enterprise perspective. And we think that you know, one-click security policies always tends to be one of them. One-click, you know, VLAN provisioning tends to be one of them. So that's really how we looked at this and said, okay, what are the things in the control plane of a data center that we need to remove complexity from so that we can eventually get to this one-click concept? Yeah, uh, Dave, well, one of the lines that I loved in your keynote, you talked about making vCenter invisible. Mm -hmm. Now, I know lots of people, they love vCenter, they use it, yeah. and it's not saying you had a tool, let's replace it. We want to take out all of those things that you just, you know, those rote things, those manual things, those repeated things yeah. that we've been doing for so long. Uh, we don't need to do it anymore. Let's set up policies. You've got Puppet as a partner. Yeah, You've got others. Exactly. You know, if I can exactly. automate those, still have the humans set everything up and understand where they need to be, but um, you know, we, we, there's only so many arms and legs we can throw at this problem. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, I, th I, think, I think that particular angle was just a preview to, yeah. I think, our you know, our evolution into Act Two, which is about this convergence of consumption model, which is essentially simply says that, look, essentially what a customer really needs to do is to not go through multiple panes of glass. They need a single interface that is simple. The tooling has to be homogenized or converged. Now, for any large enterprise, they cannot ever choose a single full stack, right? They will have different stacks, and so the, the goal of Act two for us, and that's what you're talking about when, when we say making vCenter invisible happens to be the first feature that's coming out and we'll talk more about other things in the future, is the fact that you can go into something like Prism and say, look, let me model a workload. Now this particular workload, I should be able to understand 
uh, inside our environment by either tapping into their existing workload that's running on a non-Nutanix or a Nutanix to understand the working set and the, you know, the capacity profile. And then from it, apply some SLAs or some other things and cost or whatever. And then from it, the system should recommend, oh, should we deploy it on this kind of infrastructure, which is Nutanix powered, my existing we, we, you know, we, we stack something, or an Amazon stack, right? And with one click, I should be able to provision that across any of these environments. And then go the full circle of saying, look, okay, when I provision production on, on Nutanix, for example, I should be able to right click and just say snapshot create a dev environment on AWS. And it should just be that simple. And, and to do that, it's just not a management plane problem because you got to move data. And our roots in data, data distribution, data replication, data consistency, I think that's the core thing that's going to make us different as why we were able to make hybrid and invisible down there. All right, so, so Neil, I'm curious, you know, next year is going to be a really interesting year in the enterprise space. Uh, Microsoft's supposed to have Azure Stack finally yeah. come to the marketplace. Uh, Amazon and VMware, uh, you know, cats and dogs living together, those, yeah, those yeah. two uh, have partners. Um, as you look at the space, how, how do some of those moves, you know, impact what you're doing? You know, how do you yeah. think about that? Uh, you, you've been, uh, you know, kind of, leading the way from the traditional to there, but no, some of those big guys yeah, are coming yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, so. I mean, I think it's a great question. I think, look, some of them will be a cooperative play. It's just the way these things work as companies scale out. Um, but I think my sense is that if you think about our first phase or first act, right? I mean, we had to fight mostly not against hyper-converged competitors, but we fought against the traditional architecture. That was our chasm to cross, and now pretty much everybody is now primarily leading with this architecture. So we are so, sort of we have won the architecture battle is what I would say in the first act. And now we just have to make sure that Honest products differentiate ourselves. So I think a similar chasm will occur in the next few years of making hybrid invisible. And, and you know, there's a layer of, uh, as Dheeraj said in, this, in his keynote, as you can see, there's always something that will precede the true solution such as you know, preceding hyperconverged was converged, which was meant to do what hyperconverged did. And so we had the FlexPod vBlock equivalence. And I think there will be a similar FlexPod vBlock equivalence for the hybrid cloud. And there already are, by the way, in our opinion. The recent announcements that you've seen already, in our opinion, fall into that category. I think there will be a true you know, hyperconverged offering for the hybrid cloud that has to be engineered for the ground up, that has to make it look like you know, I have an iPhone running some apps and suddenly I have iCloud suddenly plugged in to my camera, it uses my hardware, it uses the software, but it's completely invisible. That, in our opinion, is the way that we are approaching that market to differentiate ourselves. So, Sunil, so unfortunately, we've got way more things to talk about than we're going to have sure. time for. So, since we can't go through all the SMB, Robo, some of the other pieces, uh, next year, uh, DCs, where you've got the Nutanix show. You gave, showed a little bit of leg and announced some of the pieces, but what should we be looking for, your team, from the development? Uh, yeah, I, I think the, the first thing months? is to make sure that whatever we've announced today, obviously from a product uh, you know, delivery perspective, some of it is coming out immediately, some of it is coming out over the next you know, end months. I think, I think we, we're going to be looking for a lot of those to hit the market, be consumed, be traded on, to ensure that things like one-click networks, visualization, orchestration, micro-segmentation are actually in place supported, the ability to actually manage multiple hypervisors are all in play and so forth. So that's going to be a big big, uh, big thing that we're going to reemphasize and reinforce. But as, as I mentioned, I think uh, that next.next next is going to be, I think the, you know, we're going to be priming the pump over the next six months to unveil what it means to actually make hybrid invisible. So that's right. going to be the big thing to look for. So Neil Pody, always great to catch up with you. Thanks so much. Uh, we'll be back with our next guest here at the Nutanix.next conference in Europe. You're watching theCUBE. Thank you